What's going on guys and welcome back to my most requested series as of late, my UTSA Roadrunners Offline Dynasty here, my building project as I have been calling it. And I'm here showing you guys another game from the live stream about a week and a half ago or so against the UAB Blazers. And so we're approaching the midway point of the season, we're 2-3 and three on the year, and we're just getting to the heart of Conference USA play. We suffered a defeat at the hands of the Marshall Thundering Herd and now we're playing against the UAB Blazers, which was the home to NFL players Roddy White and Joe Webb. And so we're here on the opening drive for UTSA. Eric Sosa back to throw, and he flips it outside. Cam Jones gets past the defender. He's going to get the first down for UTSA as they approach midfield. Second down and six now in Blazer territory. And Sosa on the run, dumps it off to Evans Okacha looking for the first down, but he's cut short by about a yard. So third down and one coming up. Hand the ball off to Evans Okacha, the number one running back. First down, about eight, nine yards on the play. But a late flag is thrown onto the field, holding on the offense. And so that's going to negate a third and one first down and make it third down and 11 and this was during the live stream and I was not paying attention when this happened I don't even think I knew that there was a flag because it didn't come in until very late but I was not paying attention I ran the ball on third down 11 and did not get the first down so he punt the ball then to UAB and their quarterback is Jonathan Perry going over the middle first down Blazers as Perry hooks up with Patrick Hearn for the first down second and one Perry off of the play action hooks up with his tight end for the first down tackled by Darian Starling First down and 10 coming up as the Blazer dances here. We want to limit his dancing today. We want to go out and play a tough game against the Conference USA opponent. Get our first win in the conference. So it's first and 10, Perry back to throw. And he's going to do a screen pass going outside, but we are there to bottle up the running back. Loss of six on the play. Now here I'm doing player lock on Darian Starling. And I'm playing man coverage on the outside. And I'm not sure what I did there. I gave up a pass. It was close to the first down marker, but they're going to go for a long field goal attempt. And this is pretty long even by NFL standards and this one is short it's wide left not even close great field position set up for the Roadrunners then second down and six as Souza hooks up with the open man that's Jeremiah Moeller the tight end but looking at the tight ends a lot in the first few games of this series I like throwing my tight ends a lot and then going outside Brandon Freeman's got some open space to the 25 yard line first down Roadrunners as it's second down and nine Souza wants to do a screen pass but doesn't like what he sees over there so he scrambles out to his right now has no options and he just gets sacked. I was actually looking for the throwaway button because I keep forgetting what it is. And now we're going for the mid screen on third and ten and wow it does not work like it did last year. I remember it being a lot better especially in road to glory mode. And so we're going to go for the field goal to take a three nothing lead to begin the second quarter and it's going to be up and through so three nothing road runners now as UAB gets the ball back and parries back in the pocket. Good protection over the middle caught by Backman. That will move the chains for UAB and we'll go ahead to second down and eleven looking to bring the pressure and disrupt this passing game going deep is Perry and it's almost intercepted Eric Brown had it right in his hands and we'll take a little break here for a studio update the Washington Huskies where my team and my online dynasty are beating Oregon right now 24-17 and then back to our game Backman makes a catch on third and 11 but we stop him well short of the first down marker and hold UAB to no points once again and so now we have David Glasgow in the backfield I do a great job of running into the back of my own blockers and set up third down and six now for Souza to throw he wants to go underneath and it's picked off. Marvin Burdett, the linebacker, jumped in front of Jeremiah Moeller to pick the ball off. And they're in the UTSA red zone now as they look to get their first points on the day. First and 10, Perry hands the ball off to Franklin up the middle. And that could have been a big momentum shift there with the interception as he goes untouched to the end zone. And UAB takes their first lead of the game, 7-3. Glasgow up the middle for UTSA. That's going to be good for a couple of yards, but set up third down and three. Sosa back in the pocket over the middle. And once again, it's Marvin Burdett it back again. I wanted Jeremiah Moeller again and Marvin Burdett must have known something and so we're looking to bring the pressure again and we do get to Jonathan Perry and sack him for a loss of eight and force third down and 18. Now we hit him with a four-man rush but they go to set up a screen pass and they don't throw the ball in time and so good stand there from UTSA's defense as they return the punt now. It's Darian Starling from his own 19 yard line. He starts up going to the right side now has some green in front of him across the 30 to the 35 yard line. Makes a nice move there. Makes two men miss and is tackled across the 40. About 23, 24 yards on the return. Now Souza trying to throw a pass though, getting intercepted by Marvin Burdett. He does so, and now third and four. Can he do it for a second time in a row? Yes, he can. Evans Okacha underneath for the first down as we have 10 seconds to go in the first half. Want to get something before we have to go to the locker rooms at halftime, and Souza is sacked from behind. 
pressure got to him off to the left edge, and that's going to force fourth down to 19, which we will go for because if we don't make it, we go to halftime anyway. It's, we're going to take four seconds to do the play. And so Souza rolling to his left and then is launching it for Cam Jones, and I, I don't know what I was doing there. User catching for me is a nightmare in this game. I don't know why. But we go to the second half now, UAB with the football, third down and nine, and we get to the quarterback, and we could have used the stop there to get the ball back in our hands and try to have a good offensive possession. So we hand the ball to David Glasgow up the middle, good lead blocking from our offensive line, and that's going to be good for a first down, and now second and two. Hand off Evans Okacha, get hit by one of our own men, and then we're going to get the first down anyway. So we're knocking on the door and hoping for some points in this drive on third down and four outside. Armstrong makes the catch. I believe that is the first catch on the year for Brandon Armstrong. Came at a good time, and then Okacha up the middle. UAB forces third down and goal. Three receivers out for Eric Souza, one tight end. Pressure getting to him quickly, and he sacked and fumbles the football. UAB falls on it, and that was a big, costly red zone turnover for the Roadrunners, and points are coming at a premium in this game. That was a missed opportunity, and Evans Okacha has a bruised ankle, so we'll put in David Glasgow until he's ready to come back. And so we got to stop UAB on offense now, and Perry doing a good Good job of airing it out and getting some first downs against our defense. First and ten, pitch it outside for Franklin, trying to get off the edge, and we just miss him, can't even locate him, and he gets out of bounds after getting the first down. But on third and ten, we have an opportunity to force them to punt, and Perry now going to the sideline, and he overthrows his man, and so UAV has to punt the ball. Second and seven as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Sosa throws Ali to Okacha, who can't hang on, and that'll force third down and seven. Really need the first down here as we're inside of our own 30 yards line only a three-man rush a lot of time for Souza but no options that are open trying to find this open man it's intercepted Marvin Burdett for the trifecta you got to be kidding me I want to lob it over his head and threw it right to him that was great coverage by UAB and they get the ball now and they'll do the read option but we're right there you're not going anywhere Jonathan Perry laws of five so third and 15 if we could sack him here probably force him out of field goal range but no pressure at all and it's caught by Beckman into the end zone touchdown Blazers that was a nice looking play by the way and so we're back on offense down by 11 sack fumble UAB football touchdown Blazers blowing this game open now we began the fourth quarter with a score of 7 to 3 fast forward a minute and five seconds later it's 21 to 3 UAB UTSA pretty much has their backs against the wall with a three score deficit and it's third down and 20 and Souza got knocked around we had to put in Simmons and he gets sacked then UAB was bringing the pressure here offensive line must have gotten tired and so now trying to stop Franklin and get the ball back any chance that we have dashing our hopes by running the ball for a first down that we can't even fall on the fumble and so they go to kick a field goal on fourth and four. It's up and it's short, so we'll get great field position with this. Now as Souza enters back into the football game, Brandon Freeman makes the catch for a first down as we edge closer to midfield now, but Souza wanting to stretch the field. He's going to go deep, leading his open man to the spot, and Kenny Harrison comes down with it. Touchdown, Roadrunners. But is it too little, too late for UTSA? They got to go for two here to make it a 10-point ball game and make this interesting, and Jeremiah Muller makes the catch, so it's 11 to 20. Can the Roadrunners do something here with 2nd and 17? Franklin, though, is going to break a tackle, and then we do tackle him by the legs and force 3rd down and 17. So a big stop here out of the pistol formation. Jonathan Perry in the pocket. Now he's going to go for it all, and Patrick Hearn, that is your dagger. Inside of the 5 touchdown Blazers on 3rd and long. They catch us napping and hit us with a big score over the top. And so the Blazers are victorious, and UTSA moves to 0-2 in conference play now after a is the Marshall and UAB. Marvin Burdett is the much-deserved player of the game with three interceptions. It was a tough day for Eric Souza. 12 for 19 on the day, sacked six times, hit many times, and threw too many interceptions. Our offense was very one-dimensional as we couldn't get the running game established, and the passing game was just not working for us, not clicking all day. Jerron Harris had a couple more sacks. He's been playing great all season. And now we transition into some recruiting as we're looking at some prospects for hopefully next year making an impact on this team and making UTSA better. I was scouting Michael Palmer. I'm not sure why because he's already hard committed to the school. Now looking at another defensive end here. I'm just looking at all sorts of guys who can help this team out and is looking at guys who I love to play with and this is a guy who reminds me of Telvin Smith my Vikings franchise very fast defensive end a guy you can drop back into coverage as well and so I'm looking at all sorts of guys now I got outside linebacker with 94 acceleration looks like he has B speed and so you know I'm going to go after a line I love fast linebackers so 276 points looking at this guy and 
end Kyle Nichols, a three-star corner, who we're in first place for trying to gain some separation on a couple Big Ten schools, Purdue and Wisconsin. But luckily with UTSA, it's a very young team, a lot of sophomores, a lot of underclassmen, and so I don't have to fill a ton of holes this year with like a bunch of seniors leaving. But there are a couple players I've been looking at. Anthony Tatum looks like a gem, as my recruiting advisors are calling it. And so next up, guys, we play the Rice Owls, who are 3-3, three and three, as we try to get our first Conference USA win of the year. And so thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.